Welcome back to part two of our non-podcast. Don't call it a podcast podcast. I'm really aiming for that title. Okay. I mean, I don't <laughs> listen to podcasts, so I don't really have a context for any of this. I only listen to murder mystery ones, so <laughs> this is a very different path for me. So we are talking about the Midnight Sun playlist and what it means to me, the author of the novel. <laughs> and, and you are? And I'm Stephanie Meyer. And I'm Megan Hibbett. And uh, so we, this is part two, as I said, we're moving on through the playlist. This next song is another one that's been on the playlist forever, as a few of the early songs are, because these are the parts that were written back in the day. Um, So these songs have been around for a while. Um, And this one is Notice by Gomez. I know it immediately puts you in a place, doesn't it? Just love Gomez. And this is a a sad song. Really sad. So let's talk about notice. Um, (sighs) So like we were moaning about, (laughs) we love Gomez. Um, They are a fantastic band. Uh, Mm. And this song sort of fits into their first interactions after the long period of ignoring each other. Um, And him, you know, he knows what he's doing is wrong, that he should leave her alone, but he can't. And, uh, but then he also, this is where he's at that point in time where does she even... I mean, she thinks I'm a horrible monster. Like, she can't right. possibly. She could never be into me. And this makes him sad. Um, and he, and the song talks about, you know, she saw through it. I see through myself. And I'm not the only guy I know that you never notice. Yeah. Watching her reject <laughs> the other boys and being like, she's not even into anybody here. Like, none of us are good enough for her. Um, and then at the end, it shifts. Um, and I love this because this is where listening to the song, I got super excited. Like, oh, it's Edward talking when he says, um, because before he talks about, I'm not the only guy I know that you never notice. And that changed to, that's not the only lie I told you. You never notice the only lie I told you. That's not the only lie I told you. And it's like, he knows that he has misrepresented himself. Yes. <laughs> she knows he's not normal, but she has no idea. Yeah. Um, and, and so that, that seemed like a very... Edwardian mourning piece you know Mm -hmm. he knows he doesn't like having to lie to her to her of all people and then the last little bit at the end of the song feels like he's talking to himself I can tell you're in denial get over it (laughs) (laughs) because it it is denial if he thinks that he can ever be with her goes through so many emotions that song and also can I say it takes a journey if you ever have a chance to go to a Gomez concert oh take it do it do it great show it's one of the best concerts I've ever been to Okay. Dreamy. So here's a more familiar song. <laughs> what? That we all know. <laughs> and not just from Twilight. From many things. From many things. This was a song that I remember first from my childhood. My mom loves this song. She had a record version. We listened to records back then because I am very old. Didn't you tell me that she used to play classical music for the rowdy bunch of siblings to thinking it would calm you guys down? There are six of us. (laughs) And she did think that, you know, the music um, soothes the savage beast, right? Mm -hmm. That was her theory. So she would also play the piano um, church songs, like hoping to remind us that we're all children of God (laughs) and we should stop trying to kill each other. Um, But so this, this song is rooted in my childhood, but I've always thought it was one of the most beautiful classical pieces that we listen to um obvious where it fits into the book where Mm -hmm. he's listening to it through new eyes a song he's always loved but hearing her love for it too you know and and then of course his constant manic curiosity what is it about this what does she feel what does she see always wanting to know um but that one's easy because there are no lyrics (laughs) There's nothing else to say about it other than all right. And then we're gonna dreamy. take we're gonna take it is dreamy. We're gonna take a sharp turn here <laughs> for this next song. It's like the sharpest of turns. It's a pretty sharp turn, <laughs> but I love this song so much. Can't stop it before you get to the headbanging part. That would be wrong. Um, all right, so I really love Lincoln Park. 
um, obviously it's been in the books. Now, back in 2003, when mm-hmm. I started writing, uh, I didn't want to put names on anything because things get super dated, right? Right. And then, even then, I was aware before, you know, we... we there's a lot of th- things from our childhood that have gone bad, right? Let's just <laughs> yeah. put it that way. Let's yep. not name names. But, you know, you know that there's a chance that this band that you love is someday going to be an embarrassment. Right. Now, at the time, I couldn't imagine because Linkin Link Park's amazing. They're still amazing, I'm glad to say, <laughs> because that doesn't always happen. You know, there were people who were really invested in Millie Vanilli, and look how that turned out. Look, you're looking at one right Oh, now. no. <laughs> <laughs> but I was young, so, so, so don't, don't judge me. You are younger than me. I'll, I'll give you a pass on that one. Um, anyway, so I, I, I also wanted people to be able to imagine in a song that meant something to them, right? right. Instead of putting a name on it. Right. Um, but then as, and, and it worked because Bella doesn't care about what she's into. She cares about what he's into. Right. And then vice versa. So with him narrating, then we get specific details about Bella, which we mm-hmm. never got before. Um, and this song is one of them. But the nice thing about it is the lyrics work so well for both of them. <laughs> and I think as he's going through it in his head, and this isn't in Midnight Sun, um, because if I'd put every errant thought in his head, the book would be longer than it's already impossible length. Yeah. Um, and I did have to cull things back because it was way too long. Um, but I can imagine him listening to this and hearing what it means to him. <laughs> Picking it when apart. It, when it says, it's true, the way I feel was promised by your face. The sound of your voice painted on my memories. Even if you're not with me, I'm with you. Which for him would make perfect sense. And then he'd say, but what could this mean to Bella? She right. can't possibly feel that way. And then maybe she would think the more violent parts were about him. <laughs> And, you know, I'm left in the wake of the mistake, slow to react. Would you think that that's what she was hearing it? Instead of realizing that even when I close my eyes with you is also exactly what she's feeling. Um, so that one, that one is fun because it's in the novel. We know exactly where they're listening, listening to it. Uh, we'll move on to the next song, which is, again, oh. a sharp turn in the, back in the other direction. There I'm, was... Before you oh, go there, oh, there was a missing, missing song. Which one is missing here? The Port Angela song. Oh, right. Because we have to get over that hurdle. Right. So there's no Port Angela song. This is, again, something where I'm looking for violence and fear. <laughs> and the musical world that I listen to isn't giving it to me. And I, there's a whole bunch of musical genres that I don't listen to. I think you don't listen to enough of the, like, death metal. And that could be what I'm missing here. <laughs> What's the band in Empire Records? Guar? I have no idea. Well, However, I'm missing something you because, you know, Port Angeles, there's a lot of, you know, wanting to commit homicide. And I don't have a lot of songs in my playlist about committing <laughs> homicide. I don't have, you know, a lot in my collection. So someday I'll find a song there. Or if you guys know. If you guys know. Um, there's also the kind of after, there's nothing that really summed up for me that aftermath of him realizing that this whole time that she sat there talking to him, that she jumps in his car so willingly. They yep. looks up, she looks up at him as total trust that she knew he was a vampire the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> like there's a there's, Well and she moves from one danger to the next, right? Yeah. Like she doesn't Yeah, you know, and that and that she's she just is never what he expects and I don't have a song for that either. So this next song doesn't really happen until he's through all of that. And he's thinking about um, just for a minute being in love without worrying about everything Mm. that happens. And this is Demons by Dry the River. Very peaceful. I mean. Very gentle. Like, it's a moment where he's letting himself have these gentle and soft feelings that he doesn't allow very often. And uh, there are some really beautiful lyrics. The north isn't true till it's leading me to you. Uh, that, that realization that, you know, nothing is makes sense. I mean, his life is total chaos. Right. But it only makes sense when it's framed around Bella. And then he even says, I'll keep you safe while you sleep, which... 
you know, is the whole theme for him. Yeah. <laughs> a full-time job. <laughs> it's funny too, this song came from, this song was submitted years and years and years ago when we were making the movies. It got submitted by the wonderful so, and beautiful Alex Bastavis. So like um, the Motion City soundtrack song, Crooked Ways, this was something that was created specifically for Twilight. Now, Crooked Ways, I heard and had held on to all this time. This was one that I didn't hear at that time. Mm -hmm. um, there were so many songs, guys, and I think Megan listened to every single one of them. And so she had pulled this one aside because she loved it deeply. And when I was talking about, you know, there's some missing things in the playlist, we went through and listened to all of the mm -hmm. highlights, and this was one that we pulled from those submissions yeah. because it's beautiful and soft and fits that emotion. I'll say, I don't know if it was created specifically for the movies, but it was, it was submitted, submitted specifically yeah, for, us. for the movies. And it works. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a beautiful song. Also, that it's just a good band. You should go look them up. Yes. And it's called Demons because it says, I'll fight and fight those demons. We fight those demons because aside from the love, he's got to keep fighting because yeah. he has to control the demon inside. Dreamy. It works really well. Okay. This next song is also one that has been with us from the beginning. Um, it's off one of the very few albums I consider to be a perfect album. Oh yeah, we were just talking about that. We were. There are not a ton of albums that every song is perfect. And um, this is one Arcade, Fi Arcade Fire, Neon Bible is just, Genius. there are no misses. And Ocean of Noise um, is one that specifically felt very Edwardish. And here it is. Slow burn. We well, get all that chaotic noise. Yeah. They like to do that a lot. And then it resolves into kind of a. There's a sense of re resignation to the music that you can hear even from the very beginning. Yeah. Um, so this song, for me, these uh, this whole this whole little group here, um, there's a lot of songs on on the I think notice, demons. This song, not the one. They all kind of fit into these different moments of his self doubt, and the different ways that he feels helpless. Mm -hmm. um, and this one specifically feels helpless. <laughs> he says, "In an ocean of noise, I first heard your voice," which is exactly how that happened. Ring like a bell, as if I had a choice. And that's oh. a a little bit of a theme in the songs. Like he had no choice. Yeah, he was helpless because she was who she was. Um, and that's not always a good thing for yeah. him specifically. Um, and then it, it talks about uh, all the reasons. She, he says, you've got your reasons and me, I've got mine. But all the reasons I gave were just lies to buy myself some time, which fits so perfectly with his lying to himself about all the reasons why it's okay for him to keep hanging around, right. all the reasons why it's not going to hurt her um, so that he can have a reason to stay uh, and then there's another bit that I think feels very, a, a different emotion for him. Um, no way of knowing what any man will do, an ocean of violence between me and you. Because he's so obsessed with all the bad things that can happen to her. Right. Which is something that he gets from me because that is my <laughs> personal form of intrusive thoughts um, that I have to deal with is I have a real problem with... Uh, very vivid visualizations of horrible things happening to the people I love. They come mm -hmm. out of the blue. I'll be sitting here brushing my hair and all of a sudden, what if this person is dead on the side of the road right now bleeding out? And it just hits you and I'll I'll start crying and it's very emotional. And so when I, I didn't really realize I was doing it with Edward while I was writing Twilight, mm -hmm. but in Midnight Sun, as I started going through it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I gave him the worst <laughs> thing. I'm so sorry, <laughs> Edward. That's why you're crazy. <laughs> Because you're me. Because <laughs> you've got my all my bad stuff. You poor, poor thing. Um, all right. Uh, and then this is we the get last to move on. Okay, this is a great place. For this group. A great place to start. So let's just listen for a second. I mean, I just sigh. It's just so lovely. <laughs> So 
maybe it's not fair to use I, Th- I Stance by Danny Elfman because it was written for another story. Right. It's from Edward Scissorhands, which was a beautiful cinematic fable that I loved. I loved seeing people do something so old and new and interesting and subversive all at the same time. Yeah. I love that movie. Um, but so when I was, I had written Twilight, I was editing Twilight, I knew there was a piece missing. And I didn't know how to do it because, you know, I started writing the the Meadow chapter from this place. And these are the first w- words I ever typed out as a writer, right? So and crazy. And so the, it, it was this beginning. These were the opening lines in a real, real, real way. Um, and then when I went back and wrote the beginning up to that point, mm-hmm. there was a natural end to the chapter. Like the chapter ended as he steps into the light. There was no way not to. That was a... A mic drop right. end of the chapter, right? right? Not a serious mic drop, but you know, in that moment when you're writing, it's like, boom, yes, this is where we, to, yeah. we have to flip to the next page. Yeah. But so how do I do a, a three-page chapter into the middle of that? <laughs> I was screwed. And I, I just figured I would have to do it. And my editor would pull that out and say, okay, what happens in this moment? No one ever said a word. All these people who read it, no one ever said, but what about the missing piece? No one ever asked about it. No. Did fans ask about it? No. No one ever <laughs> asked. And it was like, but but what happened? He stepped into the sun and she saw him sparkling and why, and, and obviously has a reaction. And so as I was, you know, waiting for someone to ask for this, that they never did, I had choreographed it in my head and it is choreographed to Ice Dance by Danny Elfman. I know, like a dance, I know every move is hit, fits to a beat from that song. It's all there, and maybe I will dance it for you later. I will not dance it for you, listener, because <laughs> I am not a graceful dancer, um, and if... it would not be attractive. But Megan knows me well and would not judge me harshly. <laughs> but maybe, maybe someday, if I'll... the musical ever happens, yeah. the musical version of this ever happens, you'll be able well, to we tell them. We won't be able to get the rights to that song, so it won't work. <laughs> it not, it'll never work. However, so every beat. Him standing there, her running, the way she puts her hand out to him, the way he pulls his back, like all of that is in that song. And I can't listen to it without seeing the ballet that is the missing piece. And I was so, so happy to finally get to put it into the book where it belongs. Yeah, that's it lovely. gave me a lot of joy. Well, okay, so this is the end of part two. Hope you enjoyed. And then we will reconvene we'll and be talk back about more. the final section of the Midnight Sun playlist. I think there's two more sections. Do we have two more? Oh, dang. I don't know. We got to count. But we'll be back with more. (laughs) Bye. Bye.